Shabbat Shalom, Yisrael. Truly, we do thank our Abba. We thank him for the greatness of this day, for the honor of the hour to simply to be alive in his earth. Hallelujah. To breathe his air. Hallelujah. We thank him for the greatness of the strength of Yahshua. It is in him that we have our essence. It is in him that we have our being. Can we not toda ya? Toda ya for Yahshua. Is this not the occasion that Yah commanded that we gather together, that we dwell in booths, and that we seek the glory of Almighty Yah? I thank him for the simple gift of life to be able to toda his name every day. We have to come to learn that in the midst of any of our trials, any of our tribulations. We got to come to learn to, to thank him. We got to say, Toda Yah. Toda Yah. I'm reminded of Yah's word here when he said unto us that if we would simply obey, that we were to be a peculiar treasure. He said, peculiar above all people who are upon the face of the earth. That's what he said. Yeah. But when we look at the conditions of the world, mm -hmm. and we realize that all the world that is made, the billions that are on this earth, sure they do not obey him. Yes. So that it is you, Yisrael, that will seek to obey Yah. Yeah. To obey. Yeah. And to do a comparison. Let me use the word. The comparison or the comparative analysis of Yisrael versus the world yes. and to understand that number one the world does not know him That's right. he said in his word that he hath not dealt so with any other nation That's what he, said. he had a relationship with Israel that is beyond recognition mm -hmm. and yet the world does not know him That's think about this Israel that if we know him and that if we obey him he said that you would be a peculiar treasure. Yes, it's, it's so peculiar to be Israel because it is the norm to disobey. Yes. There's nothing peculiar about that. Yes. That is the norm. Yes, that is the way. Yes. That's the fashion. That's the form of this world. Yes. But he called, as my beloved Reak said, a precious bride for Hamashiach. Let us be that peculiar treasure above all people. We do not need to lift up ourselves. We lift up his precious name and the name of his son, Yahshua. I prefer to come and to simply sit today and to, to hear the word of Yah, to simply hear. It's nothing great I did, Brother Dawid. It's nothing great I did. There's no, nothing here in this flesh. Nothing. But we thank him simply Hallelujah. to be able to tow to Yah. Yes. To know Yah. I can't stop saying that. I can't stop saying that. Yes. To simply give him that honor. Can I, can I talk with you for just a few minutes? I just want to look in some things. Yes. We look at the word and we understand that he gave us his precious Torah. Yes. And I will most certainly say precious because it is above all the gold and the silver. Oh, yes. It is above yes. all the trinkets of this earth and everything that we can find in this lifetime. Oh, yes. He gave us his word. Yes. I like that. I hear the men all the time. They say, I'm a man of my word. I'm a man of my yes, word. Sir. Yes, sir. We have no word above the word of Yah. That's right. yeah. Let's remember that. We have no word above the word of Yah. Yes. And the nations today, they pride themselves on being great men. And yet this man, he gave. He gave his only begotten son. He gave him that you and I, that we might have life. That's what the scripture says. And that we might have it more abundantly. In this society, in this particular aspect of the world, we really think we're living, man. We really do. We, we really do. We think that we're living, man. We have our homes, uh, our cars. We have all the things that Almighty Yah has made. And we get these things and then we forget and then we even, in many instances, place ourselves above him. 
This is the world. This is what we do. The world. But if we're commanded to come out of her, he said, my people. He didn't say whole earth. He said, my people. I like the way Yahweh speaks to us. He speaks in specifics. He says what he means, and he means what he says. And he represents his word in its entirety. The book teaches us that he is not a man that he should lie. I like that. He says things that we can rest assured of. Let me say that again. We can rest assured. Sometimes we can't rest assured. You can send someone to do a thing. And yet in the back of your mind, you'll pause for just a moment and you'll wonder if they'll carry out the task sure. that they were sent to do. Absolutely. But he gives us his word and we don't have to second guess him. I like that. Amen. We don't have to wonder about it. We don't have to doubt. We don't have to guess. Yes. The scripture says, in fact, in one of the to hear him, he simply says, wait, yes. I say, I like on Yahweh. We don't like to wait. We live in a world where microwave children today. We're instantaneous babies. We want everything in a moment. But yet the very thing that he promised us in a moment, for some of us, he said, in the twinkling of an eye. We, we, don't, we don't even look to that. We don't look to that. We want everything at the precise moment. We want it when we want it. And yet Yah is so patient. He is so long-suffering with us. Look at the many thousands of years that he's dealt with man. And yet the book teaches us all that he has not dealt with us after our iniquities. Can we not total Yah? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank Yah simply to be able to gather. I spoke with Raya a few weeks ago and my dear beloved brother said something that I, I watched carefully. And he was explaining how in the times past, they traveled from all over the parts of the known world at that time yes. to gather, to keep the feast. Sure, and it is so true, my dear beloved brother. Yes. They didn't drag their Strong's exhaustive concordance because Strong himself wasn't That's around. So they didn't drag their latest text for Zondervan's, for Dakes, or any of the other translations. They didn't drag any of that. Because those men themselves were not around. Mm -hmm. But the words of the Nabi yes. that they spoke, they had to cherish the words. They had to cherish the memories. They had to hold fast to those things until they were able to meet again. And to be able to rest in the comfort of knowing that it was the Abba's good pleasure. It was his will that we come together. They waited patiently. They waited patiently simply for that. To debate, to challenge, to fight, to argue, they didn't do that. They looked at that word. Their faces were so radiant as they looked untowards him. We can really rest assured in that. If we have any examples in life to take, we better take the examples of our fathers who in days of old, as they obeyed Yah, we better learn all that we can learn from that. There's no greater joy than to be able to simply sit and to Shema. That is the honest, the goodness, truth there. You sit down and you hear, you listen. More often than not, we want to expound upon all there is that we know. Come on. I want to deal with something just briefly. I don't need, I don't. I want to read out of the book of Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. He says to us here in this 41st verse. And you shall keep it a feast unto Yahweh seven days in the year. And it should be a statute forever in your generations. He didn't say two weeks. He didn't say a month. Yes, he didn't say a half of the year. He yes, said yes. forever throughout your generations. You shall celebrate it in the seventh month. Us. Hallelujah. Yes. I like that. That shows a sign. That shows a permanent relationship that he established between himself and his covenanted people in that Brit. It's a relationship. He's in league with Israel. I don't think we understand that. We'll sign a lease with the landlord for a property, for a car, whatever it is, and we'll break the lease 
And we'll give it no second thought till he sues us in a court of law. And yet Yah has given us a command. He has made this covenant with us. And he said, forever. Throughout all your generations. See, the blessing of Yah that the world cannot see is because they do not know him. See, it is we, it is us, it is Yisrael. We have to change our ways. If we know him, as the old folks used to say, the proof is in the pudding, baby. Then it's got to show. It's got to show. And it's got to show in the proper applications of in all that we do. And if by chance we're ever shown or proven to be wrong, there is only one thing that we must do. We must simply turn around and get on that right track. That's the key. The scripture teaches us that there is no wisdom or understanding or counsel against Yahweh. It says further that his ways are past finding out. That's why we have the duration of our lifetimes to read out of his Torah. He gives us the duration of our lifetimes to take that yoke upon ourselves and to learn of him. You don't hit a particular point in this life with Yahshua and you become so magnificent as magna cum laude, the master, the PhDs, or whatever it is. We never get to a point where we know so much that now we cannot be taught. We've got to seek him. If his ways are past finding out, sometimes I love it because I know that our Abba can teach us in the simplest of things. Things that surpass our understanding. Yes. And then we'll say, I never thought of it that way. Sure. You didn't think of it that way because it's not your job to think of it that way. We have to mind our business. And our business is to obey his every command. That's our job. To mind our business. Is that not what the scripture says? To study, to be quiet, and to mind one's own business. If we wish to be saved, that's the rule. Come on now, that's the rules. You go in the stores, anywhere you go, they have those signs up. They say no shoes, no shirt, yes. no service. That's right. It's the same way with Almighty Yah. We've got to abide by his rules. We don't come out of the darkness and into the marvelous light and bring the rules of the world with us. We can't do it. So he said, you shall dwell in booths seven days. All that are Israelites born shall dwell in booths. Notice now, he did not talk to the world. He did not say all that are Islamic born. Yes. He did not say all that are Christian born. Yes. He did not say all that are Hindus, Buddhists, Zondervans, whatever it might be. He says all that are Israelites born yes. shall dwell in booths. See, this is a peculiar way to the world. They don't like that. Sure. He said they're doing some strange thing. Yeah, Yahweh says it's strange too. He says it's very peculiar because he's looking at the way of the world and the world is doing their own thing. And when we look at them according to the pages of the book, we learn that what the world's doing, that's not peculiar. Sure, that's right. That's not peculiar. That's right. They're obedient. He takes great delight in his obedient children. Sure he and he looks out at that. He said, look at that. Yes, come on. That's peculiar. There's one that's obeying. There's one over there. There's a family there. There's a group there. That's peculiar. Come on now. I worked on a job. The old man said, we're going to get in here. We're going to get in here on Saturday. And I want everybody here on time. So everybody just froze. They all looked at me. So I said, well, I don't work on the Shabbat. And I know you know that. This is a millionaire. He's a multi-millionaire. Sure. So I don't work on the Shabbat. I know you know that. He says, I wasn't talking to you. I said, well, I felt as though you were talking to me. So I didn't show up. And all the men, 33 of them, they began to question. I began to tell them about the greatness of the Shabbat and the significance of what it is that Almighty Yahweh commands. They might not have kept the Shabbat, but from that day forward, those men wouldn't show up. They would not show up. We shut them down simply because one man told them that this is a command from Yah. Whether they obey or not, I tell you what, there's a testimony against their souls, man, because someone's told them. And we must stand in the face of all opposition, even in the midst of the world. Don't let all the devils in hell shake your faith and confidence in Hamashiach. Don't let them do that. 
He said that your generations may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in Luth. Listen to what he said. He says that they may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths. That's, that's a relationship. Yes, that's Come on now. The world doesn't know Yah. They don't know him. Come on now. Yes. The translators, they knew of the name. Listen to that word. I believe it means to change. Am I correct? Come on. They translate. They read it. They studied it. They brought it over into their language and they changed things. They did not know him. Yes. He warned us to not add to his word nor take from it. That's right. He warned us. Yes. They don't know him. But he says he's going to make the world know. He says that they may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths. We've got to give him all the honor. We've got to give him all the glory. We've got to give him all the credit if we must use that word. We've got to give him that credit. Hallelujah. The history of our records shows us that time had lapsed, that the children of Israel had not kept the feast. Let me see if I can turn to the book of Nehemiah quickly. Yes, go ahead. They had not kept the feast in such a way as it was commanded yes. for quite some time. Time lapsed, people forgot, yeah. and the Levite, they had to recall this to the people's attention. The book of Nehemiah, the eighth chapter, I want you, I want you to hear very closely the beauty of what we're reliving today. We have to relive it. Yes, we must. We've got to do that. We've got to capture that. See, I always tell the people this. I know they get offended. I'm, I'm like Ray Ock on that. I don't, I don't care that you don't like me. I've got to say what the Almighty commands that we say. Yes. I warn them, the, the Israelites. I call them the alka Seltzer Israelites. Mm -hmm. yes, because at certain times of the year, as the feast days and various things emerge, they're happy. They have a lot of fizzle. They're so elated to do the yeah. thing. But they will not do it the way that he commands. And then all that energy suddenly, like Alka-Seltzer in a glass, it fizzles away. Yes, I am. That enthusiasm for his word, for that Torah that he commands us, we should have that enthusiasm every day of our lives. In your ups, in your downs, in your all-in-betweens, you should be able to give him that glory, give him that honor, give him all the praise that his Kodesh name deserves. Hallelujah! Never mind that the world says that you're strange. That's what the old man said to me when I said, I will keep this shit out. He says, you're strange. You're very peculiar to me. For some reason, I simply said, thank you. And that was the end of that. We should be strange to the world. You won't break my confidence in Hamashiach. If I have none, if I have no friends. I had friends and family that walked out on me. Nevertheless, we must press on. We come to learn and come to understand that when you're sick, you can't send anyone to stand in for you when you're sick. You've got to go a court system, anything. You can't send anyone to stand in for you. You've got to stand there. What makes us think that in that great day that we won't stand before that judgment throne? Yes. There'll be no excuses there. You're going to get no pass. Yes. There's going to be no probation before judgment. Let's get that straight. Yes. Come on. There's going to be no just pay the court costs and you leave. No, there's a penalty yes. to pay. And we do not want to pay that penalty. Yes. That's right. Nehemiah 8.14, he says here, I like this. I like the way this is written. It says, and they found written in the Torah. That's what they found. Look at that word. They found. To find something, you must be looking for it. Am I correct? A lot of times people, they don't realize that. They think that everything is just naturally in their heads. It says they found written in the Torah. Now, they didn't find it without looking hard. They didn't find it without searching. That takes some time. Come on, man. You can't do that if you're out at the club. You're jamming. You're spending your life away. You can't find it if you got to work 16, 17 hour a day. You can't find it. You got to make that time for the word. You got to want this, my dear brother and sister. You got to want this. To be saved, we got to want this. I've never read anywhere in a book where he grabbed and snatched up anyone and saved them against their will. I did not read that. And if you find it, let me know. So they found written in the Torah which Yahweh had commanded by Moshe that the children of Israel should dwell in booths in the feast of the seventh month. They've got us so wrapped up in this society now. We don't know the months. They got the months starting in January. They, they, they do all that. 
and we'll argue with Yisrael. We, we, we don't know, but we'll argue. We think that everything that this society does, we think that it's all correct. Right. Well, stick around. Pray that you don't die. Yes. He's going to bust up the throne of kings. He's going to bring them down. If we think that they're so right, then you continue to follow them. I know that, as Yahshua said, I stand in the same vein. As for me and my household, I will follow y'all all the days of my life. And that they should publish and proclaim in all their cities and in Jerusalem, saying, Go forth unto the mount and fetch olive branches and pine branches and myrtle branches and palm branches and the branches of thick trees to make booths. As it is written. See, we have come in this society now. We hate the written word. We hate that. We hate the written word. I, I listen to them. I've seen Jehovah's Witness. They knock on my door. They used to. They've marked my house now. They don't even touch the door. They won't. They won't even come there now. I listen to them read. I listen to the man as he stumbles over the words. And I says, how can you teach me, my friend? if your reading level does not even allow you to comprehend the basics of what is written right there before you. Yes. See, I like that. Because Almighty Yah did not stumble over the Torah as he gave it to Moshe. He did not stumble over it as he brought it to the children of Israel, as it was rehearsed in all of our hearing. He did not stumble over his words. Right. He is the master teacher of all words. And as Reach said, yes. that there are no words in no language where we can describe the greatness of him. All that we can do is give Torah unto Yah. It is the greatest name in all of the universe. It is the greatest name in all of the creation of all time since there was and never was. It is the greatest that has ever been. And we should proclaim it from the housetops at every chance that we get. So the people went forth and brought them and made themselves boots. I like that. See, it says, the people went forth. And made themselves booths. It says, everyone, not one or two. It says, everyone upon the roof of his house and in their courts and in the courts of the house of Elohim. In the house of Yah, they made that. And in the street of the water gate and in the street of the gate of Ephraim and all the congregation of them that were come again out of the captivity made booths and sat under the booths. For since the days of Yahshua, the son of Nun, Unto that day had not the children of Israel done so. And because they did as they were commanded, there was great gladness. Hallelujah. We don't get the fullness and the greatness and all the joy out of life. Despite your trials, we don't get the greatness of it until we obey. We're not living until we seek to obey. We're not even real men and women until we seek to obey. We're not real. Come on now. We're not living the best of this thing until we seek to obey. What is his will for us? If you watch all around you, people will get hired for jobs. They'll show up. They'll show up on time. And they'll want to know, what will you have me do? And they'll do every aspect that the job requires to the best of their ability. They remain, they remain there till the setting of the sun. They'll command overtime from you, and you'll work that overtime. And when it comes to the Shabbat, you say, well, I can't make it this week. I'm not feeling well. I implore you, Israel, no matter how you're feeling, press on. You'll feel better when you get there. Is he not a healer? Is he not a director? Is he not our guide? Is he not our motivator? Hallelujah. I didn't come to make you feel good. Uh, the, word, the word of Yah will make us feel good. Come on, we got to do that. That word, it speaks to us all. It speaks to you as well as it speaks to me. It speaks to us. In this day and age, yes. as he winds up the course of this earth, we have the beauty of something that our fathers did not have. They did not have the advantages like we have today. Yes. We, can, we can build elaborate libraries. We can 
download information at the push of a button. We can gather the effects of all that they experienced. We can read these things now so that we are without excuse. We are without excuse. We can take great delight in his word. In times past, you could sit up and watch a television all night long. People will grab the Torah, and in five minutes, they're asleep. The word of Yah should not bore us. Come on now. That word, that word of Yah should not bore us. There's something to get out of that word every time we touch the book. They say that they are the lost books. They were never lost. They suppress them. They were more so suppressed. And if people have that kind of power to suppress those books and suppress that knowledge, think Israel. Come on, tell me. Yah allowed them to put it together while we were in chains and in yeah. captivity. And the 66 that we have, we have yet to master that. Yeah, I see so many of the brothers now. They, are, yeah. they grab all the lost books. They're masters of this and that. They don't understand anything. Sure. Even the basics. Yeah. Come on now. I put a, a small bookcase together in the house a few years ago. I just was rushing to put it together, a little three-shelf bookcase. And I threw the thing together. I didn't read the instructions. I just threw it together quickly. And I was thinking to myself, I got a lot of extra parts left over here. I know that one. And my Isha comes downstairs and she looks at it and she touches it. So the bookcase rocks. Yes, tell me. And she simply says, you didn't read the instructions, did you? And I was immediately ashamed of myself, and I said, you're right. Yes, yes. I took it back down, sure. and I sat down, yes. and I read the instructions yes. thoroughly, yes. through and through. Yes. And I put it together oh, as the instructions, listen, That's right. as it commands you. Right. And it didn't rock. Y'all gives us the same stability in his word if we would just and follow his instructions. That's what the Torah is. It is, our, it is his instruction. He is our motivator. Yeah. He is our director. He is our teacher and our guide. Yeah. And when we follow his instructions, yes, sir, yeah. we will not rock. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. We will not rock. Yeah. We got to take our time. To enjoy Yah's word. That's what we got to do. Don't ever let the word, don't ever let the Torah of Yahweh be a burden unto you. If the Torah is a burden, you better bend those knees quick. That's what you better do. If it becomes a burden unto you, you better bend those knees quick. When you look at the world, we learn pretty much in three different ways. Sometimes we're audible. We can hear a thing and we can learn, we can retain it. Some of us are, we have to, we're visual. We can read, we can see it and understand it and we can retain it. But then some of us are, as they call, they, we're heptic, we, we're hands-on. We have to be able to properly apply it. That's, the, that. that's the beauty of the Torah. Yeah. Yeah. Because you have to do that. He said, Shema, O Yisrael, we got to hear. Yeah. People don't want to hear today because they come in the door. My father said many years ago when he was preaching, he said it spiritually in the sense of sarcasm. He said everything that comes in that door today comes in knowing. Yes. They come in knowing more than the preachers know. Yes. But he didn't say it in the sense of it being true that they knew yeah. more. He said it in sarcasm yeah. because they will not hear. And if you study Israel very close, here's the shame of us as a people. If you study us very close, we're the only people of all the people upon the face of the earth who do not listen to their shepherds. If you watch Catholicism close, the Catholic world has scandal after scandal after scandal, and they remain loyal to the Pope. And all the archbishops and everything under them. That's right. Islam can go to war at the drop of a hat and can be just as wrong and murderous as a man on the street corner. But they remain faithful unto that. Yes. Yes. It is Israel that when he ascended up on high, he said he gave gifts unto men. Sure and he listened to the book of Ephesians, what he gave unto them. On, but we will not hear them. It's a sad state. He said unto one of the prophets, he says that they will not hear you, for they will not hear me. That's what Abba said. You know you're in a bad state when you won't even listen to your Abba, the maker of us all. We're in a bad state when we won't listen to him. Come on now. 
The world can't see what Yisrael yes. sees. They can't see it. Because our bar, he hides it from them. But he's given it unto us. Let me do this. Let me go to the book of the Psalms. Let's go to Tehillim. The 31st Psalm. I want you to look at something very close with me. Everybody all right? Yes. Hallelujah. Let's look at this. This word, this word talks to us. A lot of times we're so hard-headed, we're so rebellious, we don't let the word speak to us. That's me too, Ra. We didn't let that word speak to us. The writers, this, this here, this, the world, they, we have to come to understand. When the Ruach fell upon the writers and it was in their tongues that the way he guided their pen to put his words down so poetically, so beautifully that when read carefully it speaks deep into the soul. Yes, it, it gives one the greatness of joy and delight. I want you to listen to this. This, yeah. is, this is the 31st chapter. This is to Helium 31. Yeah. Psalm 31. Listen close. 31, 19 and 20. Real simple. Oh... How great is thy tab, or thy goodness, yes, yes. which thou hast laid up for them that reverence thee, oh, yes, yes. which thou hast wrought for them yes. that trust in thee yes. before the sons of men. Yes. So we got to trust in him before all men. Yes. You can't let them shake your confidence. No, don't let them shake your confidence. They don't know him. Come on now. Amen. They don't know him. Thou shalt hide me. Listen to this now. Thou shalt hide them in the secret of thy presence. Yes. From the pride of man, thou shalt keep them, listen to this, yes, sir. secretly yes. in yes. a pavilion from the strife of tongues. Secretly. Yes. When, you, when you read that and you look at that 91st Psalm, verse 1, it says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Now let's think about that for just a moment. I like this. When we say that the world does not know him, they do not know him because they lack the closeness with him. They lack that obedience unto him. They lack all form and substance of a relationship with him. Yes, sir. How do we know? Anything that casts a shadow, if you are able to abide under that shadow, That's all right. you must be pretty close. That's all right. You hear that? Yes, sir. He says That's if you right. dwell with him, you will abide in the That's secret right. place. He all said right. under the shadow. Yes. To cast a shadow, oh, yeah. there must be some mass. Yes. To be under the shadow of anything, you must be near unto it. I hope that makes sense, Yisrael. Yes. Hallelujah. He's just that close. The book we all have says that he is a very present help. In time of trouble. He's right there. We think we got to call them. I hear them pray. They'll say, Father, go down in Atlanta and bless my mother. Go to, go to Florida and bless. He doesn't have to go there. That's right. He's already there. Amen. And when we know him and we abide in the secret place, come on now, the secret place, he is right there with Yisrael. Come on now. The scientists and the scholars of the world, these are the most ignorant of men. Come on now. And sometimes we demonstrate our ignorance too because we present a high level of patience because we'll sit still with them for years and we wait on them to give us a page, one page with some letters on it that says you are now learned. Did not Almighty Yah already do that for us all? He gave us his Torah. Yeah. He gave us all the letters that we need. Come on now. Yeah. So we sit with the most ignorant of men. Men that do not know him. And we honor them. They said, well, where'd you go? I went to Yale. I went to Harvard. I went this place. Well, we went to the Torah of Yah. We went to the secret place of the Most High. 
When we graduate and we walk down the aisle of the Most High, we will walk under the shadow of the Almighty. I say that they do not know him. The blessedness of this particular time of the year, they do not know him. I want you to hear how Yahweh speaks to us in his word. I love it. Yahweh's speech pattern, even when translated into the various languages of the world, the speech of the Abba, it is so sweet. It is so pure. It is so wonderful that, that it requires us to stop and think, man. Come on now. You got to stop and think. Listen to this. Let's go right over the 32nd chapter. Verses 8 and 9. I want you to hear what he says to us. He says, this is not the writer speaking. This is the Almighty Yahweh speaking to the writer. And the writer is writing down what he has said. He has quoted him. He says, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I like that. He says, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. But I love this now because see, you got to let go now. You got to let go. So that you can receive the blessedness of this because he says, I will guide thee with mine eyes. You're no longer looking at it the way that you saw it. You're no longer understanding it with your own understanding because you are seeing it. Look at the blessedness of this. You are seeing it the way that the Almighty commands that you see it because you are in agreement with him. You are seeing things the way he wants you to see it. Does he not say, I will guide thee with mine eye? I say to the house of Israel in Baltimore all the time, shut up, mind your business. Let Yahweh have his way. Mind. Don't worry about how he's going to work out the problem. That's his job. He is the ultimate problem solver. That's how we become so worn down. We doubt, we worry, we faint. We just don't trust him enough. Re'at and Mother Raphael was at our home, and as they left, I have some neighbors. My neighbor says to me, two days later, she says, who were the people that you were talking to in front of my house? She says, they look so, so regal, so royal. She says, were they your family? So I said, yes, my dear sister, they were my family. No doubt about it, one family. She says, you all looked so confident. As you spoke, where I said to me as he was leaving, he says, we got to get to a point where we just wholeheartedly trust Yahweh. We've got to lean upon him wholly. If we've ever read in the scripture, he says that the time is coming when Jacob shall no longer lean upon the hand of him that was stronger than he. You're no longer going to lean upon the nation. You're going to lean upon Yahshua. So she says, they look so regal. You all look so confident. If we have any bragging rights, let us be clear. Come on now. If we're going to do any boasting, or going to any bragging, we're going to boast in the highness of Almighty Yahweh, Yahweh Shua. Come on now. That's what we've got to do, Yisrael. The world's going to see it. They're going to know that there's something different about it. They're going to say, you're peculiar. You're so strange. Don't you get angry. You continue to obey. He said, you are a peculiar treasure unto me. That's what he said. You're peculiar. Not the norm. Not the man in the gutter. Not the whore on the street. Not the drunkard around the corner. Not the drug addict. Not the murderer. Not the robber. That's not peculiar. That's what they call the norm. Come on now. He wants Israel to obey. We're going to have to seek him night and day. I promised the brother, and I said, I'm not, I'm not going to cry this year. Brother said, don't you, don't say that just yet. I, I know I've come to learn and understand. We study. You look at these things close. They always say that to men. They tell them, you're not supposed to cry. Man's not supposed to cry. Well, come on now. If you weren't supposed to cry, he wouldn't have given you tear ducts. He gave man tear ducts for a reason, to release. There's no stronger man in the character and the greatness than Yahshua. And he looked out over the city of Jerusalem and he wept. He wept. Not like a little sissy boy, but he wept because of the way in which he harbored Yisrael. Come on now. 
I say, it's always so sad when I have to leave Yisrael or they leave me. Every time you all come to me in Baltimore and you all are leaving, I always back away. I give myself a few feet away from you. Not out of pride, yes. but just to have the peace of that. I don't want you to see me cry. Because yes. if I have my way, every time you come to my house, I keep every one of you. Because what we got to deal with in them cities, and I always say, brothers and sisters, these cities, these inner cities, these cities have messed us up. Yes. Oh. And the only thing that can straighten us out is the power of his Torah. Right. We've got to seek that. Yes. We've got to forsake all things. Oh, yes. We cannot worry about how we look before the world. There's no pride in that. Some, they won't sing, they won't praise him because they feel as though they've got to be so prim and proper. They've got to be so perfectly upright. Praise him. Praise him in that wrinkled shirt. You got to do that. We can't worry about how we look to our neighbor next to us. Come on now. We want to be seen. We want to be worshipped. We want to be praised. No, we're going to give that praise to the one who deserves all praise. The song says, let everything that has breath praise Yahweh. Everything. Hallelujah. Let me do this. I want to. I want to pull something together. The world, they, they have to hear this. For those that are listening by way of your live stream, they'll, they'll, they, ought, they ought to love this. They got to look at this now. If these men, <clears throat> these scholars, let's see, Harvard, Oxford, mm -hmm. Cambridge, Yale, the others, they suppress the work of Almighty Yah sure. until it was time wherein it could be suppressed no longer. That's right. And he give command, release those things. And men have to search those things out. You've got to pray. You've got to pray for some understanding in these That's things. Right. You're not going to just die and leave this earth, and That's just it. You think that you just, you, you did all that you've done. We would, myself and some of the Akim were talking on last eve. The brothers, they think, they think they're going to just die. And two, three days before dying, they'll come and claim to have found that pagan damnable Jesus. And think that someone's going to come and pour oil on their head, and they're going to just poof, and appear in heaven. Come on now. Somebody better tell you about your sin. Somebody better tell you while there is yet time. Let's do this. Let's look in the, in the encyclopedia of the law of scriptures. Let's, yeah. let's, let's pull something here. This is a rather lengthy record here. I want to put this into the record. The world has to come to understand this. In the book of uh, Ezra, some translations has it as four Ezra, some as second Ezra. Okay. But in the second, I'm sorry, the seventh chapter, I want you to hear this close. When Almighty Yah says to come, let us reason together. That was not for you to come and to debate him. You could ask your question. And if you were in that type of relationship with Yah, he would answer the Nabis. He wasn't talking to everyone. He wasn't talking to the whole world. Today, everyone has a revelation. Come on. The apostle set that straight many years ago now. He says, how is it when you get together? Everyone has a song, has a revelation. Someone has something to say. They all, everyone has it. Oh, he told me this. He told me that. But when we look at your lives before Hamashiach, you're a wreck. Come on now. We're not going to live like that. And then our lives are, 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 are picture perfect. He's talking to everyone. And yet you cannot manage your home. You have no control over your children. You have no control over your wives. You have no control over yourselves. Come on now. He's not going to have us to be a wreck. He gave up this law, and this is, as they say in this society, the perfect law of liberty. That is correct. He gave us that. In a discussion with Almighty Yah, I like that. I'll use that word, a discussion. He has not dealt so with any other nation. So his prophets could have a conversation with him. Not monologue. This was dialogue. This was back and forth. That's beautiful, man. Come on. In the presence of the Almighty... Come on now. The whole world's not talking to him. If they were, it would be a much better place. Come on now. Listen to how the prophet speaks with the Almighty. And he asks his questions in such an inquisitive manner. No arrogance, no deceit, no high-mindedness, no overly pronounced display of wisdom. 
He sincerely wanted to know. Beautiful. I'm going to tell you now, sometimes you can ask a question and you might not want the answer. That's the truth. Sometimes we do well to just simply be quiet, to learn what we can learn, to yes. pick up what we can. Learn a lesson from a sponge, simply put. It will absorb as much as it can until it can take no more. We have to be that way with the Torah. Second answer, he asks Almighty Yah a question. And the answer that he's given, he says, let the human race lament, but let the beast of the field be glad. Let all who have been born lament, but let the four-footed beasts and the flocks rejoice. For it is much better with them than with us. For they do not look for a judgment, nor do they know of any torment or salvation promised to them after death. For what does it profit us that we should be preserved alive but cruelly tormented? Yes. For all who have been born are involved in iniquities. Does not Romans 3.23 say that for all have sinned yes. and come short yes. of the glory of Yah? Yes. And if we were not to come into judgment after death, mm -hmm. perhaps it would have been better for us. And he answered and said unto me, When the Most High made the world and Adam... And all who have come from him, yes. he first prepared the judgment sure and the things that pertain to the judgment. Sure. And now understand from your own words, yes. for you have said that the mind grows with us. Mm -hmm. For this reason, therefore, those who dwell on earth shall be tormented sure. because though they had understanding, they committed iniquity. Yes, and though they received the commandments, they did not keep them. And though they obtained the Torah, they dealt unfaithfully with what they had received. What then will they have to say in judgment? Or how will they answer in the last times? For how long the time is that the Most High has been patient with those who inhabit this world? And not for their sakes, but because of the times which he has foredained. And I answered and said, Abba, if I have found favor in thy sight, O Yahweh, show this also unto thy servant, whether after death, as soon as every one of us yields up his soul, we should be kept in rest until those times when thou wilt renew the creation, or whether we shall be tormented at once. You got to listen close. I said before, sometimes we can ask a question. You might not want the depth of that answer. Yes. Ezra says, and he answered and said unto me, I will show you that also, but do not be associated with those who have shown scorn, nor number yourself among those who are to be tormented. Sure. For you have a treasure of works laid up with the Most High, but it will not be shown unto you until the last times. Yes, now concerning death, the teaching is this. When the decisive decree has gone forth from the Most High that a man shall die, as the spirit leaves the body to return again to him who gave it, first of all, it adores the glory of the Most High. And if it is one of those who has shown scorn and have not kept the way of the Most High and who have despised his law and who have hated those who fear Yahweh, such spirits shall not enter into the habitations but shall immediately wander about in torments, ever grieving and sad in seven ways. The first way, because they have scorned the Torah of the Most High. The second way, because they cannot now make good repentance that they might live. The third way, they shall see the reward laid up for those who have trusted the covenants of the Most High. The fourth way, they shall consider the torment laid up for themselves in the last days. The fifth way, they shall see how the habitations of others are guarded by angels or the Malachim in profound quiet. The sixth way, they shall see how some of them will pass over into torments. The seventh way, which is worse than all the ways which have been mentioned, because they shall utterly waste away in confusion and be consumed with shame and shall wither with fear at seeing the glory of the Most High before whom they have sinned 
while they were yet alive and before whom they ought to be judged in the last time. Does not Daniel tell us that there's a time coming when some will wake to shame and everlasting content? Come on now. The world does not know Yah. They cannot see Yah the way Yisrael should see Almighty Yah and his precious son, Yahshua. Now, this is the order of those who have kept the ways of the Most High. Listen close, Yisrael. This is what we want. When they shall be separated from their mortal bodies, during the time that they lived in it, they laboriously served the Most High and withstood danger every hour that they might keep the Torah of the Torah giver perfectly. Therefore, this is the teaching concerning them. First of all, they shall see the great joy and the glory of him who receives them. For they shall have rest in seven orders. The first order, because they have striven with great effort to overcome evil and even the evil thoughts which was formed within them, that it might not lead them astray from life unto death. The second order, because they see the perplexity with which the souls of the unrighteous now wonder and the punishment that awaits them. The third order, they see the witness with which he who formed them bears concerning them, that while they were alive, they kept the Torah which was given them in trust. The fourth order, they understand the rest which they now enjoy, being gathered into the chambers guarded by the Malachim in profound quiet and the glory which awaits them in the last days. And the fifth order, they rejoice that they have now escaped what is corruptible and shall inherit what is to come. And besides, they see the straits and the toil from which they have been delivered and the spacious liberty with which they are to receive and to enjoy in immortality. The sixth order, when it is shown to them how their face is to shine like the sun. Oh, yes. And how they are to be made That's like right. the light of the stars, mm -hmm. being incorruptible from then onward. Yes. The seventh order, which is greater than all that has been mentioned, because they shall rejoice with boldness. Oh, yes. And they shall be confident without confusion. Yes. And they shall be glad without fear. Hallelujah. For they hasten to behold the face of him whom they have served in their lifetime and from whom they are to receive their reward. This is the order of the souls of the righteous. As henceforth it is announced and as the aforesaid ways of the torments which to those who would not give heed shall suffer. Hear out. Hallelujah. Yisrael, uh, yes, the prophet Yahshua simply says, I have not seen, yes. ear have not heard, yes. neither has it entered into the live of yes. them Hallelujah. who obey Yahweh, yes. the good things yes. that are in store for them, yes. that wait yes. for him. Yes. Wait, I say, yes. on Yahweh. Yes. Wait on Yahweh, Yisrael. Yes. And he will strengthen thine heart. He will comfort thee. He will deliver thee. My dear family in Yisrael, let me simply say, I simply thank Yahweh for his great mercy, for his kindness, for the safety of bringing us over the roadway. I trust him with my eyes closed that he will return us safely from whence we have came. I simply ask that the blessings of the Almighty rest upon you here for the greatness of your kindness, for your hospitality, for your complete obedience in Torah, yes. for the knowledge that we've gained simply by being in your presence. Yes. We thank Yah for all that he's done, but more so, not simply for your friendship, you, but for the kindness of being the family Bless and the body kindness. of Yahshua, yes. that we might be that perfect bride that he's calling for. And may Almighty Yah and his son Yahshua barack you all yes. until he come. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. All right, I'll sing it like this. Listen. You are precious friends. We're so glad you came to be with.
with us me ya rabba take you all home safe and sound so we say to the ya for you all come on may your riches rest upon you all so we say to the ya bless you my precious zaki Take them down the highway, come on. Safe and sound all the way. May Yah should rest upon you, for you all have been kind to us. So we shout, Hallelujah! Take them home. Take them home, oh, safe and sound, oh. Take them down the road, so Yah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, come on. To the yard for our friend. We brought you in your Jewish name. Hallelujah. Bless you all our friends. Hallelujah. That's all right. You all don't have to be ashamed. You all can be seated. He hides every time, mommy. Maybe I keep him up here. We bless you, our precious Zachin David. You and this tremendous entourage you brought. And pray God's great riches rest upon you all in your safe travel. And that we certainly pray that you granted you all great comforts. You enjoyed yourself. We've enjoyed you being here. All of you are friends, you that are listening. A blessing all those that are so faithful and kind. So we appreciate all you all do and everything you have done. We'll be coming that way soon. I may not come, but there will be those that are here, right? The Zachim will come. And we want to come and fellowship. It's a beautiful thing. And let us stand to our feet. Bless you all our friends. You that have joined us by the live broadcast with the Barach, you all in Yahshua's mighty name. May his riches rest upon you. Let us turn toward Yerushalayim. This day is the day of Yad. This is your Shabbaton, and we do Barach you for all things. Bless your people. Go with them. Guide them. Give us great Shofat, Ras, and the Ruach this day. In Yahshua's mighty name, bless Zachain. And all those that came with him, bless him. Strengthen our Zachain, thy weeds. And even make him strong as you have made him that he prevail against all the opposition of darkness and the people stand by his side faithfully, honorably, and with consistency. We ask it all in your sure's name. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.